Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Taryn and welcome to my smart condo tour here in downtown Toronto. It features many of the tech products that make my life in this condo more convenient, productive, and enjoyable. And given that I live in a big city here in Toronto, getting a large home is actually very expensive. So I've had to settle with something that's intimate in size, resulting in me needing to be very thoughtful about every detail in this home as I don't have a lot of space. Most rooms have been carefully designed to be multifunctional and multi purpose so that I can make the most out of the space given here. Also, I've labeled this entire video down below, so be sure to skip to any part that you're most interested in or just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Grab some popcorn and we're gonna go ahead and dive into the full condo tour. First, every smart home begins with your Wi-Fi system. It's the single most important piece of tech that's gonna power all of the devices in your home. TP-Link actually partnered with me on this video to upgrade my smart home to Wi-Fi 6E with their new Deco X E75 Pro tri-band mesh system equipped with multi-gig connection. This router system covers up to 7,200 square feet, which I know is overkill for for my condo, but still it ensures that I don't have any Wi-Fi dead zones in my home. This is possible thanks to their three separate Wi-Fi nodes that are intelligently placed around my condo to ensure I get excellent speeds anywhere. Each node has a 2.5 gigabit port that allows you to take full advantage of your broadband speed. So that means I can plug in my computer, my smart TV, or even my game console and have really fast wired connections through these Wi-Fi nodes. Like look at these speeds I'm getting on my Google Pixel 7 Pro wirelessly. Like it is stupid fast. The reason I can get these kind of speeds is thanks to the six gigahertz band in the system. That band is specifically dedicated to work with any Wi-Fi 6E device that I have in my home, which is currently my 2023 MacBook Pro and Pixel 7 Pro. The rest of my devices in this house either work with Wi-Fi 6 or Wi-Fi 5. These non-6E devices still benefit from the six gigahertz band as they also serve as a powerful dedicated backhaul to ensure all Wi-Fi nodes have the best connection possible. And this actually further streamlines the performance of my non-Wi-Fi 6E devices in the home. Look at the Wi-Fi speeds I'm getting on my Pixel 7 Pro when I'm not connected to the six gigahertz network and I'm only using Wi-Fi 6. It's still incredibly fast. And this is all possible while still approximately having 30 devices connected to my network at all times. Thankfully, the Deco XT75 has an excellent tri-band system that allows network speeds of up to 5,400 megabits per second for 200 devices congestion free. And also as I move around my house, the AI driven mesh system built into the Deco XC75 ensures that I get the best speeds possible no matter where I am. The built-in AI roaming technology guides my device connections to the optimal Deco according to the loading conditions of each node to efficiently utilize my network bandwidth. By far though, my favorite thing about the Deco XC75 is the design. I'm actually really glad that they went with a white color here as I feel white tech products just better blend into an open home. And I love the inclusion of the three gigabit ports on the back, which I use with my PS5 and Apple TV 4K to ensure I get even faster speeds in the system. These great features and performance of the Deco XC75 are paired with the straightforward setup process. You can download the Deco app, which walks you through how to set up your Wi-Fi pain free. And then once you're done, you have all of these useful features that you can use inside of the app. You can monitor your network live and which devices are connected to your node. You can prioritize a specific device if you need more speed to go towards it, or even quickly set up a guest network for anyone visiting your home. It is effortless to navigate and customize your Wi-Fi network to your liking. The first part of this home that I wanna share with you guys first in this video is the balcony. It's my favorite spot to be in in the summer and my absolute least favorite in the winter, and it's absolutely massive. It wraps around my entire condo, starting from the bedroom all the way to the other end where my desk setup is. I get absolutely breathtaking views of the city of Toronto from this balcony. I am so grateful that I get to experience this every day. In terms of the really cool tech that I keep outside in my balcony, a lot of that use happens when it's at night. I have a set of ambient and warm LED lights that hang above my couch for a cozy vibe at night. TP-Link was able to level up my lighting outside by providing me with their KSS Smart Wi-Fi outdoor plug. It's a weather-resistant outdoor plug 
plug that connects to my Wi-Fi. It lets me turn off the balcony lights with a simple voice command with my Google Assistant. If you have different sets of lights or devices connected outside, each socket can actually be individually controlled. It's IP64 rated and weather resistant between a temperature range of minus 20 to all the way to 50 degrees Celsius. You can also set schedules for each device connected to automatically switch on or off. I have mine set to turn on automatically at 9 p.m. when it's dark and turn off at 11 p.m. when I go to bed. TP-Link also sells mini smart Wi-Fi plugs that you can use indoors that offer the same functionality. I really like these ones as they're tiny and they don't take up too much socket space like the other plugs I've tried. And again, this indoor Wi-Fi plug can be controlled just with my voice to turn on or off any device connected to it. Also, these mini plugs are matter compatible. So that means it does work with HomeKit, Samsung SmartThings, Google Assistant, or even Amazon Alexa. Welcome to my kitchen. It's actually a really small space here behind me. So I wanted to make sure that I only use the most useful pieces of tech that take up any real estate here. First, I have an affordable multicolor smart Wi-Fi strip from TP-Link that surrounds my kitchen island for some nice ambient lighting. This strip is exceptionally high quality actually, as it's made of a really durable PU coating on the surface. These were super easy to install and set up with the included 3M adhesive tape. And also it does work with just my Wi-Fi connection. I didn't need a separate hub for these to work, which is pretty convenient. It features extra white LEDs, which I often like to use as it gives off a usable and practical white light ambience for my home. Or I can also pre-select a specific color I desire or go deeper by creating custom color zones to make any customized lighting of my choosing. If I'm not really feeling that creative today, TP-Link also has these fancy lighting presets you can choose from that really can set the mood in the kitchen. Or suppose you're like me and you just love to listen and jam out to music as you're cooking, you can turn on the music mode and the lights will dynamically change and match the beat of the song playing. So I found that to be really cool in terms of adding nice vibes to the kitchen. And also I have a single security camera that has a 360 degree view of the kitchen right behind me, as well as a living room, which is kind of behind you guys watching this video. And it's this little guy right here. It's this security camera from TP-Link. It's known as the Tapo Pan Tilt Security Camera. So you're probably wondering why I have a security camera inside of my condo. Really the main function for it is that whenever I'm not home and maintenance needs to take place inside of this home, I can't help but feel a little bit wary and uneasy about people that I don't know being in here and them actually maintaining integrity and not stealing something. So that's why that security camera is there because a lot of the maintenance that could happen inside of here would take place in the kitchen anyways. So I can get a live 2K resolution feed from my smartphone of precisely what they're doing if I'm not there. I can pan the camera horizontally thanks to the 360 degree range of the security camera. It also gives me a better view of what's going on in the primary two rooms of my home. I can also tilt the camera vertically if necessary. And also if you're like, me, I'm actually very uneasy about cameras inside of my home. I don't feel comfortable with this thing being on at all times. TP-Link acknowledges that and allows you to turn on a privacy mode, which shuts down the surveillance in the app with the click of a button. If you do like to keep your cameras on 24 seven, these security cameras have night vision of up to 30 feet. They support local storage of up to 256 gigabytes of video on a micro SD card. And it also has two way audio support. So if I'm not home, I can actually talk to you through my phone is gonna project my voice through the camera. So if I do that right now, hello, hello. hello, hello. My name is Taryn. Taryn. This is an audio test. audio test. And also I can have you communicate back to me as that camera has built in microphones and I can hear it through the speaker of my iPhone. So if I keep talking, you can hear the feedback coming through my iPhone speaker. As for my speakers, I use a white HomePod mini to listen to music while cooking or cleaning inside of my kitchen. And to the right of it, I keep a Google Home smart display. It's easily one of my favorite tech purchases of all time. It's helped display quick recipes on the screen anytime I'm cooking. It's served as a content consumption display whenever I'm eating. And it also has been the center of all of my questions that I need answers to thanks to the Google Assistant. I actually regret not buying the bigger Nest Hub Max as I actually think the bigger display would have totally been worth it as I sometimes find that the one that I have, the display is a little bit too small for my taste. And to the right of it, I have a really cool diffuser from Sage. It creates scents in the condo that have been fantastic 
for just evoking any kind of specific mood that I'm in. All of the tech that I just mentioned that sits on this table here all have really long wires. So I did my best to cable manage the wires just below the kitchen island. I think it did a pretty good job. It gets the job done and I don't have to see any dangling wires as I'm going about my day. I also have a Dyson vacuum that I love to use for any quick spills or spot cleans in my home. But at heart, I'm still a robot first vacuum kind of person. I personally feel that my home is at its cleanest thanks to the automated cleaning that our robot vacuum can provide. And I actually use the one from Echovax. Okay, so in terms of the actual space of the kitchen, we got a fridge right there for all of my like food and things like that we got a freezer just below so it actually blends into the wall which I found to be really cool as well as a dishwasher that also blends into the wall which is just right there you open this cabinet a bunch of different food and things can go in there lots of storage space that I really do appreciate we got a coffee maker right there Got a sink, we got a kettle right there. And then we also have an air fryer from Ninja that I really, really do like. And then our stove top right there. Below, we have a microwave right there. I also have two chairs in case I have guests over or if I wanna eat dinner at the table here as well. It's something really cool. These cabinets, when you do open them, they kind of curve up. So I find that to be pretty fancy. Uh, maybe that's just me. I found that really cool. When you pull it back down, it just got kind of quickly lights down and then it doesn't really slam into the wall. It has a really slow finish. Um, so lots of more cabinet space there. And then I just bring that down. And then voila. Oh man, I forgot to show you guys this as well. This is super cool. These are 3D like hexagon type panels from Govi. So as I move over from one side and then go all the way to this side, at least in person, these are super trippy to look at, they're 3D, I love them, and it's in the shape of a like a little spaceship there. Okay, so welcome to my living room, which is just right behind me. I actually have trouble calling it that sometimes because it's not just a place where I play video games and watch TV, it's also where I film the majority of my videos. It's where I work on my business, as that's where my main desk setup is. It's where I do yoga and do workouts on the main TV there in that little space right behind me. I do a lot there and I couldn't be more proud of how productive and multifunctional that tiny square is in my home. I wanna start off first with my home theater setup and the main TV that I'm using is a 55 inch mini LED QLED 4K TV from TCL. This TV is packed with features, including a dedicated game mode for reduced input lag and an enhanced gaming experience, very deep blacks and excellent color reproduction thanks to the mini LED technology built in, all while boasting an edge to edge glass design. I was really drawn to this TV because of the price. It's one of the cheapest mini LED TVs you can buy, and it's also one of the best in my opinion. It really does do a good job. It does have Roku built in, but I opted to use the latest Apple TV 4K, powered by the A15 Bionic chip, which is the same one you'd find in the iPhone 14. The result is a TV experience that is incredibly responsive and fast, and I'm a huge fan of Apple's custom-made live TV wallpapers. They update them constantly, making my TV display beautiful imagery when it's not in use. The main attraction, though, by far, far in this living room home theater setup is my Philips Hue light setup. Whenever I watch a movie, the lights can capture the color data of what's on screen and reproduce accurate colors that essentially extend the image of what you're watching. It makes my TV feel bigger than it is as the lights push out colors that match the edges of the display. It dramatically enhances the movie watching experience for me. It makes it feel more cinematic and more engaging. And I prefer to watch movies at home versus a theater because of it. The same is true when I'm gaming. It is incredibly immersive and draws you into any game that you're playing with all these lights working together. This same effect also works with sound. I can have the light match the mood and beat of the music playing, creating incredible music vibes in this condo when I do have friends over. The only thing though is that this setup is quite complicated and honestly very expensive. It requires a very expensive dedicated TV gradient light strip from Philips Hue, basic light strips that cover the top and bottom of my TV stand, a really expensive HDMI sync box from Philips Hue that reads the data of the music, video, or video game that's on screen. And you also need a separate bridge device from 
Philips Hue that allows all of these devices to talk to each other seamlessly. I'm never deviating from this type of setup. It is awesome. It has forever changed the way that I consume content and entertainment in my living room. In terms of gaming, my two consoles that I have right now are the PlayStation 5 and the Nintendo Switch. Sorry, dedicated Xbox fans out there. I'm just not an Xbox guy. I also have a Dolby Atmos enabled soundbar from Samsung with a subwoofer paired works excellent in my opinion. And to the far right of my TV stand, that's where one of my TP-Link Deco 6E routers sit with the Apple TV and PS5 plugged directly into those ethernet ports. And if there's any time that I have the entire home theater turned off, I have a Philips Hue light switch mounted on the side wall near my couch. I can press the power button to turn on the lights to create ambience, adjust the brightness if necessary, and press the hue button to change the color scheme to any one of my favorite presets I have saved. Okay, now I wanna discuss where this space starts to become multi-purpose in multifunctional, starting off with my carved out section for my entire YouTube studio on one stand. This is the exact setup that I use to film all of my YouTube videos. I'm actually using it right now, like it's just in front of me. That's why you actually don't see it behind me in the frame here, I, I can't there. <laughs> it's usually sitting right there where that lamp is, but obviously I'm using it right now. It's one of the greatest purchases I have ever made for my business, for my productivity, for my workflow. It has made things so much easier. All of my filming gear sits on a quadruple pistol grip roller stand from Strobe Pro. It's heavy duty and allows for easy attachment and adjustments to my filming equipment thanks to those pistol grips. I can move this entire setup that I'm looking at right now anywhere in my home because it has wheels on the bottom and I get perfect lighting, perfect audio, and with the click of one button, I can get to recording right away. For those of you that are curious, the primary key light that I use is from newer. I just got it off Amazon. The camera I use is a Sony a7R 3 with a 16 millimeter Sigma lens. Actually, right now in this video, I'm filming with the Sony F 1.8 11 millimeter lens, APS-C. It's freaking awesome. I recommend you guys buy it if you can. And I pair all this up with the DD D3 Pro shotgun mic boomed off the pistol grip. I also have a camera monitor attached from Feel World to get a better view of what is being filmed. And I have an iPad arm attached to where my filming notes go while I record myself talking. I keep this entire setup in my living room most of the time as once I'm done filming and talking to the camera, I can take out the SD card and slide right over to this dream MacBook Pro desk setup right here. Yeah, actually, this is my dream MacBook Pro desk setup as it's powered by some of the best stuff in the market today. My main desk is a bamboo sit stand desk from FlexiSpot with excellent cable management occurring on the bottom of the desk to hide as much of the wiring as possible. The main monitor that I'm using right now is the 5K Apple Studio display. This thing right here is really expensive and probably not worth it for most people, but for someone in my career path, it has been totally worth every penny. It's engineered to perfection. It works effortlessly with my MacBook Pro and the 5K panel never fails to amaze me. Speaking of my MacBook Pro, I am currently using the M2 Pro model sent from Apple. It has 32 gigs of RAM, two terabytes of SSD, and the M2 Pro chip is maxed out with 12 core CPU and a 19 core GPU. This specific MacBook Pro that Apple sent me is the fastest computer I've ever owned. Like it has removed so many barriers into my ability to create things. I absolutely love this computer. And the mini LED 120 Hertz ProMotion panel on the laptop is just something else, man. It is absolutely stunning. I could talk for ages about this desk setup, but I already discussed this in a full video in my MacBook Pro Desk Tour 2023 video, which I'll link above and in the description down below for you to guys check out. And if you're curious about my thoughts on the M2 Pro MacBook Pro, I have a full cinematic day in the life review that I know you will enjoy, which I'll link below as well. Okay, now let's break down the actual living room space here. So on the left side here is the couch. That's where I chill, watch TV, play a bunch of video games. I also have like a little stand here where I put my food to eat and I have a bunch of my remotes there as well. Over on this side are some of my favorite books I've ever read. Security cameras right there. I have, you know, some frames there from my past in high school and then some other paraphernalia there on the bottom. I also have more frames right here. One notable one is this iPhone one. It's just really cool. It's kind of like a detached iPhone, really completely separated of all the parts. Really cool frame that was sent to me from a company that I can't remember the name of. That right there is my university diploma. I went to the University of Guelph for anybody that's curious. And obviously to the left over here is the main MacBook Pro desk setup. So these blinds right here actually open up. If I adjust my exposure here, I actually get a view of downtown Toronto right from where I'm working at my desk here, which is, I think is really cool. And then the same is true about my couch, where if I roll up the blinds there, you can see 
like the beauty of downtown Toronto just from my balcony. As much as I love my living room setup, my bedroom, which is just right behind me, is a close second in terms of just how cool the tech is in here. It's the space that houses my second home theater setup. Yes, I have two. And this one features a 120 inch projector from Nebula paired with an Apple TV 4K and two stereo paired Dolby Atmos supported original HomePods. Watching movies inside this room gives me a different kind of experience for my living room. It provides the more traditional big time feeling that you'd get from a movie theater as the 120 inch projector takes up so so much of your peripheral vision and the Apple HomePods do a really good job filling up the entire room and giving you a soundstage that is full and electric. I also have a pair of Philips Hue light strips and light bulbs in the room to give it ambience when I want it. The lamp on the bedside table features two outlets, USB-A and USB-C. So it's been really clutch as a hub to charge all of my devices while I sleep or feel lazy and want to work from my bed. I also have a Google Home mini speaker just on this little like dresser here behind me. Absolutely love the thing. Like I can ask it any question I want and it just answers it like immediately. As you can probably tell, it's my favorite smart assistant in terms of like intelligence. I prefer to use it over Siri and Alexa for the time being. Okay, so for the actual bedroom tour, so on the left side here is my dresser. I just have a bunch of my clothes in all of those drawers there. And I usually try to keep the top part of it clean. I just don't like to have anything, you know, kind of stick it out. On this side, it's a little bit messy, but you know, that's where the, obviously the projector is, Apple TV, the lamp. And I do have two yoga mats here. This one in particular is a Manduka Pro. Freaking awesome yoga mat, but it is stupid expensive. I got a bubble tea bear that I got as a gift from my girlfriend's sister. I also have a baby Yoda, which is, I love this thing to death. It is. Super cool. Over here is a fitness scale from Fitbit. It just measures my weight and my body fat. And then I have a nice giant mirror here that I actually really like. Hello. My favorite part about this room though is actually the bed. It's an ND. You may not have heard of it, you may have. It's kind of like those mattresses that they send to you in the mail in a box. But this is super, super comfortable. I absolutely love my bed. I, I, I literally every day, look forward to sleeping on this bed. It's, it's that amazing. And if I adjust my exposure here, if we look outside the window, we got a nice beautiful view of downtown Toronto from my room so I can still see all the downtown buildings, the highway. I love it, it's, it's awesome. Now we've made it all the way to my den, which is just right behind me. And as you can tell, it is very, very small and cramped in here. So I had to be super thoughtful about how I wanted to use this space. Through trial and error, I've decided that it's best to treat this space as an area where I keep most of my filming gear and other accessories. I have an Ikea cart with many different random tech accessories I'll always need access to on a moment's notice. I've also decked out this room with Philips Hue play bars and nano leaf lights for a really cool ambience in here. On the left side of the room is a large white desk, which is right here. It's actually a sit stand desk that I built myself. It has two functions. The first one being that underneath the desk is just a storage bed for all the tech that is sent to my studio for review and testing. I get sent so much stuff all the time. I'm literally running out of space in this home and that just happened to be the best place to put everything. And the other function that it has is that it acts as a platform for my top-down shots of my videos. I have a Sony ZV-1 camera mounted on a C-stand that overlooks this desk with a key light in the background. This is where I can shoot those interesting top-down shots that you guys have seen in my videos. I don't like using the onboard mics of the ZV-1, so I also attach a DDD4 mini mic for better audio when I'm unboxing anything. If you've made it this far in the video, you probably can conclude that this is easily like the messiest room in my home. But I will say that through all of this chaos, there is some level of organization here that works for me. I just really had to compromise here. Like I have so much stuff that I need to pack into this tiny den that I think I needed to allow myself to be a little bit messy for this place to work. And last but not least, I don't know how much of you guys care here, but this is the bathroom. As, as weird as this sounds, <laughs> as weird as this sounds, I really do love the bathroom in here. Like it just has a really modern aesthetic that I can appreciate. And the only piece of tech that I do keep in here is a HomePod mini for any time I wanna to listen to music and jam out as I'm showering or brushing my teeth 
which is practically like all the times. So I'm always playing music through here. But anyways, comment down below, hashtag I made it. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, you are goaded. Like, thank you for sitting through this hot entire thing. Like this was really hard to produce. So I hope you guys did enjoy it and make sure to check out my latest video right here if you guys haven't seen that already. And I'll talk to you guys all in the next video. Peace.